Hello friends, welcome to week 10's Q&A. It's joined by my lovely wife Lucy. Hi guys. Lucy will continue asking me some of your questions from last week. Let's do the next one. So the next one is by Mo Meliwa. And uh, you asked me to, to include these questions because it was important. Um, he asks, you seem to be a, met, a big fan of metformin. What are your thoughts on kidney toxic effect of it? Is it something to be concerned about? And then he has a follow-up uh, comment. And he said, do you know why so many gurus suggest it is? Um, does it have any effect on the kidney long term? And if if someone is genetically predisposed to kidney problems, should they stay away from it? Thank you so much, Lucy. Uh, thank you, Mo, for your question. Uh, I was uh, taken aback by your question at first. Let me answer your question up front, and then I'll explain. So, first of all, I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice, and this is for informational purposes only. Uh, metformin is not kidney toxic, and uh, the reason why. First of all, it's not even known to be a kid uh, issue for kidneys. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this in a second, but metformin does raise lactic acid levels. So there is potential, although it is extremely rare that it happens, extremely rare, there is potential for someone to incur what's called lactic acidosis, which is extremely high lactic acid levels. Uh, extremely rare, I mean to the point that it's almost unheard of, and there's a lot of research on this subject. now. This is why the FDA recommends that for diabetics, metformin is by the way only prescribed for diabetics. It's only prescribed for uh, insulin resistant people. That's the only FDA prescription for it so far. However, currently there is a large study being done by a researcher named Nir Barzilai, which will uh, hopefully uh, possibly get the FDA to approve metformin for the purposes of aging on its own. With that said, right now it's only prescribed for diabetics. With the diabetics, there is a concern, of course, because diabetes causes kidney issues. There is a kidney damage from diabetes. And, and, and because of that concern with the kidney damage from diabetes, and in addition, this concern of lactic acidosis, the, the FDA has a requirement that a doctor or an advice that doctors do not prescribe metformin uh, when creatinine levels are above a certain amount. That's a kidney uh, biomarker. With that said, there is a lot of, uh, you know, there's a, I've, re I've read a lot of research reports that show that metformin has a good effect on uh, kidney renal function in diabetics. I mean, you know, what you should do more is just go on Google Scholar and search metformin kidney disease, search metformin renal function, search metformin uh, kidneys, and you will, or nephrotoxic, you will find that um, metformin is actually, it's the opposite of what you're thinking. It's metformin has been, has been um, aiding uh, diabetics with their kidney function. Now, unfortunately, you can't see metformin's effects on kidney function on non-diabetics because those guys are the ones who would have even probably most likely the best effects. Mm -hmm. Those people may have really kidney protective effects from metformin. But unfortunately, most of the studies are on diabetics. So now, so the, the two other things that he that he mentioned that I'd like to discuss. So first of all, he says a lot of gurus claim that metformin is kidney toxic. Oh, this is so concerning. <laughs> so I don't like. Uh, I, 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 so I'm trying to be politically correct, but it, in general, if somebody approaches you with the idea that he's coming from a place of authority. So for example, if he talks to you like, my name is Leo Rex PhD, or my name is Dr. Leo Rex, so, which I'm not, by the way, I'm not a doctor, I don't have a PhD either, but uh, I've even seen people on Instagram, by the way, that will tell you, Leo Rex MSc, Master of Science. I am a Master of Science, but I'm not gonna tell anyone that. It's ridiculous. When people come to you like that, or if they come to you from a, 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 a place where I've done all of this in my past, I work with top people, I know what I'm doing, and they don't want you to question their reasoning, show the show uh, academic evidence or explain at least biochemically how things work then you have to stay away from these people and mm -hmm. uh, you know the word guru comes from uh, of course i'm sure you know more the word guru is an indian word uh, it comes from a tradition in uh, you know hindu traditions where there is a teacher student relationship that has a sacred element now unfortunately that that is a beautiful thing but unfortunately that teacher-student relationship can easily be abused by con men and people that don't really know what they're doing but they want commercial benefit. So if you go on Wikipedia, for example, and you search pseudo-scientific uh, health advocates list, search list pseudo-scientific health advocates, mm -hmm. you'll find a list of con men and interesting people that have recommended all kinds of things from the fruitarian diet to solve cancer 
to uh, you know, I mean, breathinarianism, breathing air. To so there's a lot of not just to the scientific health advocates. If you search the list list of raw food advocates on Wikipedia, list of um, uh, high fiber. Actually, the high fiber advocates are quite good, but list of uh, low carb advocates, list of uh, high fat advocates. You'll find lists of diet advocates, and you read a little bit into their bios. If you read enough of them, you'll notice one common thread, which is a lack of, um, of evidence, of academic evidence in their recommendations and commercial interests. Mm -hmm. And when these two things combine together, you have to be concerned. So what I'm trying to tell you is, be careful of anyone who is a guru, who calls himself a guru or is it, or not calls himself a guru. I'm not talking about anyone that we know in common, by the way. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about just people in general. Uh, if somebody comes to you from a place of authority, be careful. Ask him, what is the scientific evidence for this? Are you worried about lactic acidosis? Because that's the only potential concern that I can think of. Of course, metformin is excreted from the kidney, but that's, it's not very uh, taxing on the kidney from everything we can tell. Yeah. So basically, be careful of people like that. And, and by the way, there was another question this week. I don't think we picked it. It was about um, Ray Peet, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll just uh, briefly mention here. I mean, I, Ray Peet is sort of a, a guru as well, but unlike these kind of people, Ray Peet tries to explain biochemically his reasoning for things. So for example, he believes without much uh, empirical evidence, in my opinion, that um, omega-3 fats are more susceptible to, um, to becoming rancid or more susceptible also to oxidation in the body. So therefore, he warns people from using fish oil. He instead recommends that people use things like, uh, similar to flaxseed oil, things like that. But he at least has a biochemical explanation for why that is. He doesn't say fish oil is bad for you, period, right? Yeah. And also, another thing that's great about Ray Pete is that he's, he's over 90 years old. He's lived quite a long time. Uh, I didn't want to discuss a video about him in particular because, I, to be honest, I'm not that expert on his views. Uh, because I, I, the views that I already seen from him, they go against my understanding from the academic literature. But the point is, be careful. You know, I don't know why, why people come up with these things. And another thing is this, a lot of these kind of guru type people, you see, in this industry, if people are relying on this for their financial health, if, they, if their livelihood, their family relies on their income, the best thing they can do is to be, um, to, to be like sort of um, contrarian, to say things that are opposing to what people know, you know? Yeah. So they come out with, with, uh, with statements that get attention so people can talk back to them. So, and, and they have to be unique. And yeah. it's difficult to do that if you're using academic literature to back you up because Usually, more people read academic literature. They should come up with similar uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, if, so so what happens in the end is that if you go by the academic literature, you're not so unique. So you need to come up with weird things. So yeah. this is where these ideas come. And also, to be honest, a lot of these people don't read the academic literature because maybe they're not trained in sciences. Maybe they don't know how to understand the literature. Maybe they're lazy. Honestly, maybe they're just lazy. And and so you know, so be careful from these kind of people in general, and always question. If you have a coach or a guru or something like that, ask him why he believes what he believes. If he says he's seen it from clients' experiences, that's somewhat valid, you know. For example, um, I did a recent series on the cholinergic system. I can explain some things in the cholinergic, you know, cholinergic system using academic evidence, and some things I say from personal experience. For example, I believe that supplementing with alpha GPC downregulates cholinergic receptors. Um, I don't have any academic evidence of that. There are no studies showing that, but I've seen it enough times in my own life and in the lives of others that I know it to be true, you know? So he could tell you that, but if it's something involving a drug and something complicated involving medical conditions, he should have some evidence for why it's happening. It's definitely not going to be from personal experience because uh, it's, it's really, you'd have to have a large sample size of clients that took metformin and had kidney damage to know that that was the reason because so many other things can cause that. And in general, you know, it, it, I can't advise you personally, though, if, you have, if you're susceptible to, to kidney damage because of a genetic uh, a polymorphisms, which, by the way, I wonder what they would be. I think you mean that it runs in your family. Um, you, you know, I can't advise you on whether that's too specific, that's for a doctor to, to discuss with you. But I would say one thing, I have a feeling that you're involved in uh, fitness because of the, the kind of people you're mentioning. And so, uh, because longevity people don't say that metformin is kidney toxic. So I imagine you're involved in fitness. And if so, you have much bigger things to worry about with regard to your kidneys than metformin. Specifically having higher muscle mass levels on its own. Look at your blood pressure, which can be affected by muscle mass. How much you eat, 
the more you eat, the higher your blood pressure could be, um, the more taxing it is to your body, the, the your protein levels, so many things. Basically, that whole lifestyle is sort of mildly kidney toxic in general. Mm -hmm. So you want to really be careful about that. Uh, anyway, but thank you for your question. Do you have anything to add? No. Okay, thank you for your question, Mo. We'll see you next time.